The best quality hybrid and traditional photo lighting and shooting videos are available for you at ShootSmarterUniversity.com. And they're less than 10 bucks a piece, too. Hey, folks, Will Crockett here. I have a response to one of the emails sent in through the Ask Will section of discovermirrorless.com. And it's a a letter from a guy who has gone into a camera dealer in Australia. And it's kind of been tweaked a little bit because they're a little bit behind on maybe where they should be thinking. Now, I would like to make this video so that not only am I addressing uh, Seamus here from Australia, but other photographers that are interested in moving into the whole hybrid universe. But I also would like this video to be used by camera dealers across the globe because I, please, uh, if you're a camera dealer and this is the first time you've been introduced to us and what we do, I am a kind of a well-known photographer in Chicago. I've done global seminar tours. Please Google me. My, my pedigree is rather impressive, but I am leading the charge for photographers to make and stay profitable and non-pro photographers to enjoy the fruits of we photographers' labor and we're moving from a group of professional photographers that shoot still photos and create printed products. So I'm a commercial photographer, so we just sell the files. But the, the majority of the wedding portrait senior photographers sell the printed pieces as a way to generate an income. Well, we're going to be moving into a way that we're going to shoot photo and video and audio files to create both printed products and e-products, electronic products. Bottom line is, as we move that way, even guys like me that have, you know, real clients, I'm shooting a big, huge job for Peter Pan peanut butter right now. I mean, <laughs> sounds kind of funny, but that's a really good job. <laughs> I'm using all mirrorless cameras, and I am not being paid by the mirrorless camera folks I have in the past, but that's not my intention. My intention is to share with other photographers that we are using mirrorless cameras instead of DSLRs. We have pro DSLRs here, but I'm not the only only one. Go to discovermirrorless.com. You'll see a list of what we call our hybrid heroes. Those are all pro photographers that have DSLRs and are choosing for some, if not most, of their jobs to shoot mirrorless cameras. So what I want to do is I want to reach out to my dealer friends all around the country as well as all around the world and let them know that if you're stuck in this whole DSLR thing, that that's the only way to go, I want to let you know gently and respectfully, please, that you're wrong. And I want to ask you to reconsider because if not, you're going to fall apart and disappear like the rest of them. Use Chicago as an example, right? For years, I bought my gear from Helix in Chicago. At one time, they were the largest pro as well as non-pro photo center, multiple stores, the whole thing. Well, they they became older in their staff and stuck in their ways and they didn't see, well, the, the digital thing took a shot because they were into film pretty heavy, but they went the wrong way. They went into medium format digital instead of DSLR. And then when they finally caught up with DSLR technology, it was slipping past them too. Now that we're moving into hybrid photography, they are not able to re-educate their staff and move forward. All right, here's another one. Calumet is based in Chicago. They have stores all over the world. They don't understand that DSLR is going to go away, and they are struggling a whole bunch in many different levels, and I've talked to them, and I would really like to encourage them that the camera doesn't matter as much as fueling the photographer with the tools that they need. So when I hear of camera stores and actually see camera stores that kind of, you know, do the snobby poo-poo thing that mirrorless is ridiculous and you have to have the full frame sensor and stuff, A, I have tested all that stuff and I'll tell you that you're wrong. B is that way of thinking is just going to get you shut down. So you're probably angry at me right now. I, I ask you, please not to be. Hear me out, will you? That's all. Just just play this. Let me know. Please check on me. Really, go to the uh, Mac group, right? Sakonic, Pocket Wizard, whoever. The quantum folks. Go to, forget the camera makers, because then you'll think I got a bias. Go to Think Tank, for instance. These are all companies, uh, x Right. these are all companies that I've worked with for decades, and they know me, and they love me, and they trust me, and they know that I deliver results as well as information. Then, Check out the ShootSmarter.com group. They'll tell you, too. Will Crockett tells you the straight scoop. That's the way it is, right? Well, here's what I got. <laughs> Boy, that was a long preamble, wasn't it? <laughs> it says, hey, Will, I had a run-in, which means a little problem in Australian speak, with Sydney's TED's camera store. An employee uh, apparently gave him some uh, whatever, uh, Zach Arias, who's a nice guy, by the way. 
uh, words describing Canon and Nikon as two old men in the bar that are always arguing over their specifications. All right, Zach Arias is a, a guy that's gone from DSLR into shooting mirrorless. He's in love with the Fuji X100S, which is a great camera to be in love with. But this is aggressive speak, and I don't, I don't believe into this. I saw Zach Arias's piece, and it talks about how he describes Nikon and Canon as old guys that are fading away. All right, there's no need for that. That doesn't help anybody make a better picture. And if Zach wants to do that, that's terrific. And the, the place for it is on his website. That's not what Discover Mirrorless nor Shoot Smarter is about. We want to be open and help all, and we don't want to take shots at other people. Next, uh, uh, Seamus says, hey, where's the Panasonic section? How come there's no GH3s? Which is a legitimate question, assuming it's spoken correctly. Uh, he said, uh, also mentioned that they just visited a wildlife photographer of the year exhibition at the Australian Museum and how all the photos were shot with Nikon and Canon. And it seemed to be a bit of a Nikon Canon club, except for one lonely Annie X. Well, that's the way it is. I mean, for, for wildlife, to be honest with you, nature, wildlife, if I was a, those kind of shooters, I'd be shooting full frame DSLRs too. I want all those little nuances and details and to make big, beautiful prints. So in my opinion, just my opinion, nature, landscape, stuff, that's st still DSLR range. Okay. Next, he says, uh, I was given the line, right, from the camera store, which um, it's uh, always a trigger. I was given the line, the micro four-third will never match the physics of the full-frame sensor as a light-gathering device. All right. One of the little triggers that I have as a speaker, as soon as I get one little cranky guy with, you know, in the front row that says, oh, you're going to argue with physics? Well, no, I'm not going to argue with physics, but that's an extremely narrow-minded position, and it means that you don't understand what the leaders in the industry are doing. Sony and Panasonic are leaders in video, right? They've made TV cameras, and what they've done is they've taken high-end, television-grade video cameras, which are spectacular, right? Watch an NFL football game. If you want to see how good a video camera is, that's good stuff, right? Remember, those cameras are way the heck up there when they're doing that shot of the guy returning the punt. That's a big deal. All right, they're adapting their video cameras to shoot still photos, and there are changes, yeah, they have technology of using small sensors because of the physics, in fact, and now they're boosting them so that they make really good still printed photos. So instead of relying on physics and a bunch of doublespeak from idiots in forums like DP Review, why don't you simply set up a test and try for yourself? So be open-minded to technology when it comes your way. Try it, right? Everybody's raving about the GH3. Great. I, yep, I have to admit it. I was on the small team that helped to develop the GH3. Yeah, I had a minor, 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 minor role, that's all. I don't think they listened to any of my suggestions whatsoever. But I was one of the people that was testing it, and I have and still have a great line of communication with the folks at Panasonic. I am not connected with them in any way. I'm just a photographer that shoots a wide variety of stuff, and I'm very particular about my image quality. And I want to have a small, lightweight, terrific camera that does photo and video that also gives me great image quality. So all I want to do is ask camera stores because your sales are down, right? Be open-minded to new products. Please, that's all. Next. Uh, he was dismissive towards, had a dismissive tone towards the micro four-thirds. Uh, and he was surprised. So Seamus, A, don't be surprised. There are some camera stores that are Nikon clubs and Canon clubs, right? When you walk in and you see a guy wearing a Canon hat or a Nikon belt buckle, automatically you know you're in the wrong spot because all they want to do is defend their brand instead of move photography forward, which is why camera stores like that are failing from coast to coast. Next, he said, uh, Seamus, he says, man, I was so angry I stopped thinking. I said, okay, Seamus, it's okay, man. Y you've just been enlightened <laughs> by, by the whole Crockett man. Look, we're, we're almost like time travelers. We were a year and a half ahead of the curve when we started this, right, two years ago. When we started bringing this whole, hey, guys, keep an eye on this mirrorless stuff because it's, it's going to make life easier for us to our ShootSmarter.com readers, a good portion of them freaked, right? They thought I was nuts. Well, I am nuts, but I was right. Well, if you look back on our predictions from the past two years from blog posts and they're public, you'll see, hmm, how does Will Crockett know all that stuff? So, well, I've been involved in some of it, but anybody who kept an open mind could have seen all this coming anyway. Yeah. So he says, uh, uh, the physics supply, uh, micro four-thirds APS. No, look, here, here's the deal, man. Say we take a 
premium mirrorless camera, and this is one of my favorites, right? This is a machine that I am using to shoot. In fact, I have two jobs this summer. Uh, billing totals will probably be over $60,000 for just those two. And this is going to be my primary camera. This is the Fuji X-E1, and I'm going to shoot it with the Lumix GH3. No DSLR, that's just the gig. Now, this has an APS-C size sensor, so it's not a full-frame sensor, right? And it's not a small micro four-thirds sensor. The quality of those images are spectacular. I can make... 24 by 46 inch prints off the JPEG, no raw file, out of those. So you guys at the camera store, do me a favor, right? Pick up a Fuji X-E1 and put it in JPEG mode, full-size JPEG mode. Pick one of the fun film simulators. In fact, if you want to do a really cool test, choose the black and white uh, uh, simulation mode here inside this and shoot a black and white JPEG, right? Proper exposure. Use the auto dynamic range. Use everything else. Then I want you to take that JPEG file and I don't even want you to run it through Photoshop, right? Find somebody that's got RIP software like Image Print and I want you to make a 24 by whatever it is, 38, for, no, it'd be a 42 inch print. Take a look at it. Tell me what's wrong with it, right? Please email back to me and get my email from discovermirrorless.com. Tell me what's wrong with it. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with it. That's right. Then do yourself another favor. Put the ISO of that little crazy XE1 into ISO 3000. Go out at night with one of the Fuji lenses, the 1.8s or 1.4s. Shoot it wide open, handheld. Don't even bother to use a tripod. And do another print. And tell me what full-frame sensor camera that you have can do that. And you'll find out there aren't any. Yeah. Honest. Try it. Try it. That's right. Next, uh, the, oh, wow, the experience of that miserable son of a gun at Ted says, I no longer feel empathy towards dealers that are getting squashed. All right, don't, don't do that, buddy. Seamus, we're, we're here, and we're here to guide people, and our info here is going to be mainstream in probably eight months to a year. All the PPA and WPPI folks that are using those big DSLR cameras when they really don't need them. Now, if they, if they do need that kind of resolution, then you should use that camera, right? But most don't, right? Very few of the WPPI, PPA style shooters are selling big wall prints. And in fact, even if you do, then you shoot raw on a mirrorless camera, and then you allow the file to be resed up as it goes. And that's where the camera store people are going to freak out. Oh, you can't res anything up. Well, yeah, you can. You should look at the new technology on how things are resed up. And in fact, if you were to crack open one of Sony's video cameras, you would see that they have a unbelievable way of resing up files to use a digital zoom. Yeah. This is going to give them fodder to rip me apart in the forms, which is great. Will Crockett thinks a digital zoom is good? Hang on. Sony, in a few of their cameras, has a digital zoom function that reaches back into this glorious database and it pulls up vector values and tonality scales that compare with what they think the image is and it adds those on there. That's the same technology that the government uses in facial detection, right? When they want to take a fuzzy security camera photo and they want to make it look like a high-resolution photo, yeah, they really can invent pixels that aren't there. So that's just another thing maybe that some camera stores are behind on. Technology is going to allow us to use a very small size sensor in very big ways. Anyway, uh, next one is the... Uh, uh, his Fuji X100 is his dream camera, the Weatherseal GH3 rocks. You're exactly right. They're both very different cameras. The GH3 is the all-around, really terrific, well-balanced camera. It really is. It's a terrific camera. But the Fuji cameras have a little bit more gutsy feel to the files. The, the image quality is, in fact, a little high, actually a lot higher on the Fuji camera, but it, it is more difficult to shoot. So it's up to you. Do you want, you know, the Toyota, the well-balanced car that's eh, a little bit boring and doesn't have a whole lot of crazy features? Or do you want to, you know, move into a, you know, I don't know, Mercedes kind of thing that you can get one that's a little funky, right? A little kind of fun. Ooh, a Mini. That would be like a Mini Cooper. I love Mini Coopers, by the way. Seamus also says, uh, uh, oh, a couple other things. Uh, anyway, honest, refreshing. Okay, so sorry to take so long to the camera store folks, but 
please just listen to what I have to say. I want you to be around. I believe that mirrorless cameras and hybrid photography are the renaissance of small camera retailers. So knock that chip off your shoulder. Learn about hybrid photography with DSLRs. That's great. Then learn about hybrid photography with mirrorless cameras. Choose the right mirrorless cameras that fit for your audience and then go sell the heck out of them. Here's what I'm finding. I'm finding that a lot of dealers in the United States are asking me to come out and do my hybrid hangout weekend event that starts Friday and it ends Sunday with a hands-on shoot. Now, you also notice that we don't advertise that as a mirrorless event. We advertise that as a hybrid hangout and never on the promo materials do we say it's, it's all mirrorless. No. But we've got three big speakers that are all mirrorless shooters that talk about hybrid photography and talking portraiture. Not saying it's camera specific, but I usually kick it off on Friday night with my intro to, or it's uh, getting started in hybrid photography. It's presented by either Fujifilm or Lumix. Those are two guys that love to sponsor me, and I, I usually flip it back and forth so that I don't have any sort of bias, right? Then, Saturday morning, in the store is uh, one of our writers, Robbie D, who uses Sony cameras and Lumix cameras, and he talks about adding motion. Then, Suzette Allen, big superstar, comes in, and she talks about about talking portraiture. Then Sunday, we take everybody out to some sort of location and we do a hands-on shoot and they get to submit and there's a contest. There you go. That's a great way to have people come in and not have to say, oh, it's mirrorless. I don't want anything to do with it. Just gently get them into the idea. You know why camera stores? Because you've sold those people on DSLRs and lenses and accessories. Now DSLRs are going to become antiquated and they're going to go away, right? If you want to argue about that, that's fine. Go ahead. Just do it somewhere else, right? Well, you now have the opportunity to resell that customer a new smaller camera, new lenses, LED lighting, smaller lighter bags and tripods, and they're going to buy those. The question is, are they going to come back to you to buy those, or are they just going to buy them on Amazon because the last time they came in to ask you about hybrid and about mirrorless, you pissed them off? What do you think about that? If you need me, get in touch with me. I'm wide open, and I would love to help you. I also think you need to contact Ted, uh, Ted's in Australia. You need to contact Seamus here, and you need to send him an apology. You need to invite him in the store and take him in the back for a bologna sandwich, right? Have sit down, have lunch with him. Maybe even ask him to do a hybrid seminar in your store. I'll bet you he'll do it. And I'll give out free videos to Discover Mirrorless to every person that comes into your store. Okay, so am I helping you? I sure am. Tell me how I can do it. If you want to argue... Go to DP Review with the rest of those full-frame only morons. Have yourself a great time, man. Bye. The best quality hybrid and traditional photo lighting and shooting videos are available for you at ShootSmarterUniversity.com. And they're less than 10 bucks a piece, too.